My name is Richard McCallum. I'm going to read from Fault Zone 2018, my story, Thomas Edison's Last Invention. I'll read a little bit. At the conference, I sit in the front row with the other correspondents from various news outlets, but I'm the only movie tone news reporter. During Edison's speech to the conventioneers, I keep my eye on his overbearing wife as best I can. She sits in the crowd behind me, monitoring its responses. The audience shows interest in his views on AC versus DC electricity and his competitive remarks about Tesla. The crowd's focus on him pleases her. One old man, though, snoozes off, and Miss Edison taps him with her cane, snarls. At the end of the speech, Thomas receives a standing ovation, and the journalists begin questioning him. What role do you see for religion in our modern scientific world? Asked the first reporter. I flinch, knowing Miss Edison must be shooting me threatening looks in her husband's direction. He glances at her, then turns away. None, Thomas says. The crowd murmurs and takes notes. Miss Edison's, Miss Edison's cane taps the floor in rhythm with the beating of my heart. Another reporter known to cover religious issues asks, do you believe that man has an immortal soul? I cringe, not daring to face Miss Edison. The tapping gets louder. An immortal intelligence, Edison says. In the few mo moments of verbal silence, while the audience absorbs what he just said, the tapping of the cane increases in speed and volume. Then everyone starts talking at once. I look back and see Miss Edison roll her eyes and shake her head. The glare she gives me could melt iron. She waits my question. I take a deep breath. Many of your inventions, I say, the phonograph, the movie projector, in essence, immortalize personalities. Do you put any stock in psychic research or mechanisms that claim to communicate with the dead? I feel Miss Edison's eyes burning a hole in the back of my head. The tapping stops. Her weight must be shifted to the cane. Yes, Thomas nods at me. I do. I glance back. Miss Edison rises, stops her cane, screams her husband's name. Sir, I shout out over the glamour. Clamor. <laughs> have you attempted to invent such a gadget? All my inventions have resulted from my attempts to create this device. I can now report I have succeeded. A collective gasp. Then the shouting begins. The old lady pushes her way onto the stage. She drags Thomas out the door. The news hounds follow, laughing, shouting cruel jokes about ghosts. Miss Edison fends them off with her cane. Thomas has been sick of fever, she screams to blazes with you for repeating the mumblings of a great man suffering from old age and illness. She herds Thomas toward the waiting limo. I sidle up alongside. The old lady shoes me away with her cane. You're no better than the rest of them, she hollers. Sarah was wrong about you. I'll have to have a word with her. Over his wife's shoulder, Thomas mouths, Seller, Monday. I arrive at the Edison house late Monday afternoon. Thomas has arranged for the gate to the iron fence around the yard to be unlatched and the cellar window left open a crack. No evidence of Thomas. I widen the window gap and climb through. A display of all of Edison's original inventions clutters the space. One resembles a small movie screen made of glass. I sketch the scene, then hear someone coming. Time to hide. A corner affords a view of the room. Thomas Edison comes down the stairs. Thomas, I whisper. He signals, signals me to come over to the glass projection screen. Wires and vacuum tubes connect behind it. Edison switches on the device, and when it warms up, the inventor tunes in a signal. He sits, and I stare over his shoulder. Images play of swastikas, military marches, and a mustached man shouting. Sounds like German. I witness passenger ships torpedoed, cities bombed, families herded onto trains, starving masses, living skeletons huddled together, bodies piled up in huge mounds. Then from the apex, 
where the pictures originate, that massive flash erupts and spreads to fill the entire screen with the image of a huge cloud rising in the shape of a monstrous mushroom. All the images swirl into a cosmic whirlpool. Just then, Miss Edison clatters down the stairs faster than anyone would have thought possible. I warned you, she says to me, and wielding her cane, hits me and knocks me down. She starts smashing the equipment around us. No! Thomas and his psych, I must protect the screen. I lunge and utter a piercing cry, trying to muster the strength to stop her. She knocks me back. Then Thomas Edison appears in the screen's whirlpool, transparent as a ghost, staring out from the other side as if the horrid images had absorbed his consciousness. I rise and gasp. Thomas Edison, Thomas Edison remains seated in front of the screen. Miss Edison demolishes the glass tube, breaking off the head of her cane. I watch in terror as shattered glass flies. Thomas's body, face bleeding, slumps forward and tumbles unconscious to the floor.